Today I'm going to be talking about different tools for communicating your research online. There's a lot of free stuff out there and useful platforms such as Twitter and blogging which we've covered in previous videos. But you may have noticed, unless something has gone terribly wrong and you have no idea how you got here, that we quite like using YouTube to share information. Why is this? Well, YouTube is a really fun to use tool, both for finding interesting research and science videos, as well as for hosting your own. Now, you can make a video with pretty much anything, and a lot of people use simple tools such as their smartphones, tablets or laptop, because all of these devices have inbuilt cameras and microphones. If you want to go up a level like we have, you can buy a simple DSLR camera and film using that. I could go into detail about sound and microphones, but that's another video. My point is, you can make pretty darn good videos with stuff that you already own, which means it's free. YouTube is ridiculously popular, and according to their statistics, they have over a billion users, and YouTube overall, and even YouTube on mobile alone, reaches more 18 to 34 and 18 to 49 year olds than any cable network in the US. It's pretty darn impressive. More and more people are getting their information from YouTube and there's a definite trend towards people looking up help videos to solve problems and get information. So why not be part of that knowledge bank? YouTube videos are typically short and sweet with anything over a few minutes often leading people to switch to something else. You can create a whole profile with your videos listed within it, or you can make your videos unlisted so only people with a direct link can access them. This is especially useful if you want to use YouTube for teaching and need to restrict access to current students until the course is over. You can always change the setting later on. You can also put videos into themed playlists, which not only allows people to watch a whole batch of videos on one topic, but you can also break a large topic into bite-sized videos for people to dip in and out of, as well as uploading them as a whole playlist for the more committed viewer to work through. YouTube videos also embed really well in blogs and on other social media platforms so you can share and post them in a multitude of different ways. As YouTube is part of the Google empire, you can also host a Google Hangout to discuss a particular topic. This is a really good way of having a group discussion or interview with people interested in your subject but who may be based in a multitude of international locations. Just think Skype but through Google. The really cool bit about Google Hangouts is that once you've got your YouTube account set up, you can set it so that your Hangout automatically uploads as a YouTube video for other people to watch. This is especially handy if you have run a live discussion that not everyone will have had a chance to see in real time, so they can catch up later on. Also, this is a really good way of archiving a useful resource to come back to. If you're not comfortable with being on screen or simply don't have the kit or can't afford it, there is an alternative, podcasting. Podcasts can be video or audio based episodes that cover certain topics, but when most people think of podcasts, they think of the audio version. A combination of pod from iPod and broadcast, podcasts allow for people to record pretty much anything from a narrated story to a conversation with other people and they can often be thought of as a mini radio show. Podcasts have been around for a while, but a recent surge in popularity thanks to hit successes such as US podcasts Serial and Welcome to Night Vale have reawakened the genre. But why choose podcasts to share your work? Well, people can download them and listen to them wherever they are, so they can take your expertise and knowledge with them. Any long commute is often made invariably better by an engaging podcast. You have the option to listen to pretty much anything with lots of people putting out content for free. Plus, it can also be educational, with many universities putting out audio recordings of popular courses through Apple's iTunes U, so you can take Biology 101 or Ancient History with some of the world's leading universities. Pretty cool. Anyone can record a podcast, and there are plenty of free tools and apps out there. Podcasting is especially accessible on a smartphone, and a personal favourite is the Audio Boom app. Download the app, hit record, and away you go. Many free apps are limited in their editing abilities, but if you want to have something quick and conversational, then they're excellent. I hope this video has given you some food for thought, and let us know what cool YouTube or podcast content you find in the comments. See you next time.